So we're going to set up the Geonodes modifier that behaves something like Turbo Smooth from 3D Studio Max. Now, a lot of guys when they're working on models in Blender, they want to create sharper edges on these types of things, and so they'll add in bevels or holding edges, and then also they might crease them as well. So what this modifier is going to do is it's actually going to turn sharp edges into creases, and it's going to allow us to subdivide, and we're going to do it twice, so we're going to be using double subdivision technique as well uh, with the modifier. But it's going to allow for you to get a up res or a down res on a shape like this very easily, because if we look at this when we shade auto smooth, we'll see that it's actually going to round out and soften these areas on the inside, right? So that's really great. But what if we could do that with subdivision, right? And you can with creases. So and when you create this thing, this is what's going to happen or the behavior it's going to have. If I turn on wireframe with zero subdivision of the base, we get something like that, but we can increase that base mount there. And we can also change with an auto smooth option. We can increase or decrease that auto smooth. So we can get a result like this and then just hit it with one more subdivision. And we get this going so we can shade smooth here, uh, but it doesn't actually work. It still has all these sharp edges in it. So we can now just tap shade smooth there. If we uncheck that and apply this, we'll still have sharp edges. If we check that and apply it, all the sharp edges will be gone. Take note of that because later on you can actually use those sharp edges with quad remesher to do some cool stuff with that as well and retop of this with quad remesher if you needed to. And sometimes that's useful for sculpting, but it's more of a, uh, a rare case perhaps. Now, so uh, turbo smooth, right? That's what we're going to be creating more or less. Now, we're going to go over to um, geometry nodes here, and we'll just use this uh, piece for an example anyways. And when we're creating this, we're just going to create a new geo node setup on it, get rid of the modifier if uh, you had it, I guess. So here's the thing. We're just going to call this... Um, Turbo Smooth 2 for now. I'm going to run through setting this up, not try to explain exactly how to work with Geonodes. So that way we can just get set up and going here very fast. So first thing we're going to do is just press Shift A, search. You can just start typing. We're looking for subdivision surface. And we can add that, drop it in, duplicate it. And we're going to drop it in again. Okay, we're going to have something like this going now. And we want to do another... Uh, node set shade smooth at the front here. We're going to connect that to geometry. We're going to do by face and we're going to run this into a smooth by angle. If it pops up, smooth by angle normals. Okay. Plug that in. Plug that into there. So we got that going. Now let's look for is edge smooth. And we're going to look for a knot, which is a Boolean utilities math Boolean knot. Okay, so is the edge smooth? If not, set creases right here, edge crease. Okay. And then that should be good to go right there. Okay. Um, this subdivision here, set it to level zero so that it doesn't work by default. The first one will add a little bit of subdivision, okay, but not much. Next thing we want to do is another set shade smooth. And this one, we're going to plug in. We're going to set it to edge. And we're going to plug this into a switch. So the switch is going to go right here. And we're going to drop this into true. And the other one can go into uh, false right there. So basically, we're going to have this option available to us that we can set it shade smooth or not. We want to go through a realize instances node. This is so that you can use other modifiers with it. It doesn't glitch out. At least it was glitching out on my end. And uh, realize all is fine. All right, so all of this should be pretty much set up and good to go uh, with the exception of connecting the inputs here. So uh, we're going to do, the first one is going to be the by angle right here. The next one is levels one, levels over here. Okay, and then last but not least, that Boolean switch, we're going to go ahead and connect it into there. So these are all of our inputs now. Okay, and these inputs, uh, we can rename if we press N, bring out the side panel. You should have geometry, geometry, and then it starts with angle here and goes down, right? Um, this is going to be our auto smooth. Levels here. You can name this what you want, but I call it subdivide base. 
Okay. This will be our second subdivision. And the switch is going to be kind of a yes or no question, right? So shade smooth. And it gets a little checkbox. You can see all these are showing up over here. And it's set up 30 degrees, 1 and 0 in shade smooth. Now, one of the things we do want to change for sure is going to be uh, this one here, right? Where it says all. And you're probably going to want to keep corners. Let me kind of show you why real quick. If you're creating certain kinds of shapes here, right? Like this. And you were to start using this Turbo Smooth 2 now, I guess, on it. Should show up right here. You see it rounds everything out. You don't want that usually. So keep corners. This can happen again where it rounds things out, uh, possibly. But usually I found that it doesn't really matter all that much. But if you want to change this one too, you could. So you can check that to keep corners if you wanted. Um, I'm going to leave it at all though. And that way we just preserve the shape on non-manifold mesh a little bit better. Okay. So after we go through all of that, uh, it's pretty much set up and good to go. All you're going to do is give it the appropriate name. Right click, mark it as an asset. Okay. Go ahead and save out your Blender file, potentially to a new folder where you have uh, all kinds of GeoNode modifiers that you create at some point, right? And just give it the name of the modifier. So we just call it Turbo Smooth, I guess. And you save it in that folder. Okay. Now, in your preferences, set up under file paths your asset libraries you would want to click the plus sign geonodes modifiers and then reference this folder like so so save your preferences every time you load up blender this modifier will show up now okay you have to make sure it's tagged as an asset and you're referencing the folder and then now you'll be able to go to um, the menu and you'll be able to do the turbo smooth modifier that you set up right now you guys that watch the channel you're probably saying like hey you've done a video like this already yes but i missed a couple important things so i wanted to redo it but it, nonetheless if all is said and done and it works well let's make sure we got everything working correctly we should have no problems here um, changing the values here to turn that up and down okay if i set it to 180 everything should become smooth zero it should act like um, you're doing just a regular subdivision a double subdivision technique or everything kind of stays sharp but you can see the resolutions are increasing and decreasing with that first one. Okay. So let's go back to uh, not 30, but something a little bit higher maybe. And then we'll do the second subdivision. It should start to round it out, but it should be kind of sharp still unless you click Shade Smooth. Okay. And there you go. So it should be working for the most part. Just double check that when you um, come in here, maybe turn it off in edit mode. Control E. And then also check that if you mark a sharp, that it will actually sharpen that area as well. And as you can see, the right side is much softer than the left side. So increase that resolution a bit more, and you'll see that more pronounced now that it's doing that. Okay, so if that's something you wanted to do, you can now add additional refinements by just marking sharps. So you can use auto smooth with sharps. Sharps are converted to creases. And as a result, we get these really nice clean geos like this that are very great for high poly modeling. And um, they can be used also possibly for the low poly. You just have to be a little mindful of what you're doing. Maybe you don't do that final subdivision. And then maybe you apply like a level one. And you can always work these things back down to try to get a low poly out of it. It doesn't always work out. But you can definitely do something like this as well. So it's just a, a little idea there for you guys to uh, use or not use, I guess, right? Maybe you can do some optimization of your meshes and end up with both at the same time, right? Then shade it auto smooth, obviously. And we're back, kind of back where we were, but now it's a higher resolution, you see? So really cool way of modeling. I'm going to do more videos on this in the future, and then we'll play around with this. And, and get kind of involved with it because it's a really it's a really awesome way of working that if you don't set this geo node up you don't really have it in vanilla blender unless you crease everything working with creases constantly setting creases on edges can be rather frustrating a lot of times all you need is like an auto smooth crease which would be awesome right well that's what we just made so we'll have a much better time uh, creating models with creases in blender uh, working with this anyway so
Hey, if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. I'll check you out in the next one.